Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. In this video, we're gonna talk about translated beings because it was suggested that the Watchers could have been translated beings. Translated beings have bodies. Maybe they were the ones that mated with women that were not translated, which gave rise to a hybrid race of giants. So maybe that's what was going on. And so what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna compare what it says in the Book of Enoch to what we know about translated beings. And we're going to try and answer a couple questions. Um, number one, why were people translated? And then number two, were they able to procreate? So talking about people that were translated in the days of Enoch and Noah. And is this plausible based on what we know about translated beings in those days? So first, we're going to read out of the book of Enoch itself. And uh, this is in chapter six. By the way, the way that this reads makes it seem as though the Watchers or the Angels had already been there for a while, maybe since the beginning of the world, uh, which we know that translation didn't take place until Enoch. But let me go ahead and read what it says here. And it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied, that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of the heaven, saw and lusted after them and said to one another, come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men and beget us children. Now, again, in the last video we covered, it's not angels from heaven that were having children with women. It was the sons of God who were righteous men that had daughters and those daughters married the sons of men or men that were not of the covenant. Those were the ones that were marrying the daughters of the sons of God. It was not angels, but let's continue. And Semjaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations, not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in all, and they were in all 200 who descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And these are the names of their leaders. Sam Lazaz, their leader, Aral Kabla. I'm going to skip that. It doesn't matter what their names are. These are their chiefs of tens. And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose himself one. And they began to go in unto them and to defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms and enchantments and the cutting of roots and made them acquainted with plants. And they became pregnant and they bare great giants whose height was 3,000 L's who consumed all the acquisitions of men, and when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. Okay, so this is the Book of Enoch account of these uh, potentially translated beings um, again, we know that they're not angels of the sort of uh, those that are, are still in the pre-mortal existence because they don't have bodies yet, right? Um, we know that it's not people that had come to mortality and then passed away and then come back as an angel because, again, they don't have a body. But what about translated beings? Could these have been translated beings uh, that entered into an oath and they decided to you know, with their leaders, they decided to go and take themselves wives. All right, so let's go ahead and let's uh, begin our study of translated beings um, according to the doctrine of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Doctrines of Salvation, Volume 2, by Joseph Fielding Smith. Translated beings, still mortal. Okay, right? So they have bodies. Translated beings are still mortal and will have to pass through the experience of death or the separation of the spirit and the body although this will be instantaneous. The people of the city of Enoch, Elijah, and others who received this great blessing of translation in ancient times before the coming of our Lord could not have received the resurrection 
or the change from mortality to immortality at that time. Because our Lord had not paid the debt which frees us from mortality and grants to us the resurrection and immortal life. So, a couple of things here. Again, there were no resurrected beings at that time. That had been suggested before. There were no resurrected beings before Christ. Secondly, he seems to suggest here that the reason that they were translated is because resurrection was not then available. So, but let's continue. So just keep that in mind. Now we're going to go to Millennial Messiah by Bruce R. McConkie. Uh, This is page 284, Zion Through the Ages. After those in the city of holiness, okay, that's the city of, of Enoch, the city of holiness. That's kind of a big clue as to these translated people the city of Enoch. They were translated in the city of holiness and compare that to what we just read in the book of Enoch and uh, those so-called angels. After those in the city of holiness were translated and taken up into heaven without tasting death so that Zion as a people and the congregation had fled from the battle-scarred surface of the earth, the Lord sought others among men who would serve him. Okay, righteous people. From the days of Enoch to the flood, new converts and true believers. Okay, so opposed to false believers like the tares. You have the wheat who are true believers, tares that are not. New converts and true believers, except those needed to carry out the Lord's purposes among mortals, were translated. And the Holy Ghost fell upon many And they were caught up by the powers of heaven into Zion. And men having this faith, the faith of Enoch and his people, coming up unto this order of God, the holy order of priesthood, which we call the Melchizedek priesthood, were translated and taken up into heaven. After the flood, righteous men, knowing what had been before their day, continued to seek a place in Zion. Of those who lived in the days of Melchizedek, it is written, And now Melchizedek was a priest of this order. Therefore, he obtained peace in Salem. It was called the Prince of Peace. And his people wrought righteousness and obtained heaven and sought for the city of Enoch, which God had before taken, separating it from the earth, having reserved it unto the latter days. Okay, this is coming from the scriptures. The city of Enoch, the people that were translated, the translated beings, were in the city of holiness because they were righteous and they were true believers and they are being reserved for the latter days. That doesn't seem to accord with what we just, what we just read in the book of Enoch Um, or the end of the world. And hath said and sworn with an oath that the heavens and the earth should come together and the sons of God should be tried. So as by fire, but thereafter, except in a few isolated instances, a few isolated instances. And this is this is after the the city of Enoch uh, took off. Okay. So this is not at the same time as what we just read in the book of Enoch. This is well after the fact. But thereafter, except in a few isolated instances, those of Moses, Elijah, Alma, the son of Alma, John the Beloved, and the three Nephites are the only ones of which we know. Except in these cases, each involving a special purpose, the Lord ceased translating faithful people. Rather, they were permitted to die and go into the spirit world, there to perform the ever-increasing work needed in that sphere. We are led to believe that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and some of the faithful of old continued to seek an inheritance in the city of Enoch. Paul says they looked for a city which hath foundations whose builder and maker is God, and that they confessed they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth, for they declare plainly that they seek a country. Okay, now uh, we're going to go back to Doctrines of Salvation, Volume 2, why Moses and Elijah were translated. And then after this, we're getting to the part where our translated beings able to procreate, because that's, that's another key part about this. From what we understand why Elijah and Moses were preserved from death, 
because they had a mission to perform, and it had to be performed before the crucifixion of the Son of God, and it could not be done in the Spirit. They had to have tangible bodies. Christ is the first fruits of the resurrection. Therefore, if any former prophets had a work to perform preparatory to the mission of the Son of God or to the dispensation of the meridian of times, it was essential that they be, preser- they be preserved to fulfill that mission in the flesh. For that reason, Moses disappeared from among the people and was taken up into the mountain, and the people thought he was buried by the Lord. The Lord preserved him so that he could come at the proper time and restore his keys. So this is saying that at least one of the reasons why Moses was translated is because he needed to have a physical body. In For some reason, you need a physical body in order to uh, hold these keys that he had. The Lord preserved him so that he could come at the proper time and restore his keys on the heads of Peter, James, and John, who stood at the head of the, of the dispensation of the meridian of time. He reserved Elijah from death that he might also come and bestow his keys upon the heads of Peter, James, and John and prepare them for their ministry. But, says one, the Lord could have waited until after his resurrection and then they could have done it. It is quite evident due to the fact that it did not so occur that it had to be done before and there was a reason. There may have been other reasons, but that is one reason why Moses and Elijah did not suffer death in the flesh like other men do. Now, let's go to Mormon doctrine uh, under the entry Church of Enoch. Um, and it says, see Church of the Firstborn, Exaltation, Translated Beings. All the inhabitants of Zion, being devoted members of the Lord's Church, with Enoch at their head, were translated and taken into heaven. It's it's interesting to note, they aren't left here on the earth to watch over mortals. There's nothing in the scripture or in any of these works that we're reading that suggests that they were still here on earth or that they were overseeing the earth or anything like that. They were translated and taken into heaven. Their callings and elections were made sure. Now, if you don't know what that means, that means that um, essentially before the judgment, before the final judgment uh, of your your individual life, you receive that assurance that you have you will have exaltation. It's like you've proven yourself enough in mortality; you will be receiving exaltation, even though you haven't yet reached your final judgment day. Okay, or you're not yet uh, resurrected to that glory. Their callings and elections were made sure, and they were all assured of membership in the church of the firstborn and of an inheritance of exaltation in the eternal worlds. Those so favored were, of course, with Christ in his resurrection. And I think this is something that a lot of people don't understand about um, the city of, city of Enoch. I think they think that they're still in a translated state. No. They were initially translated because they were so righteous and they were worthy that had there been a resurrection at that time, it seems that they would have been resurrected to just be like, okay, you guys are good, resurrected. But in this in this case, no, uh, because Christ had not yet uh, performed the resurrection. But once he did, it says here, those so favored were, of course, with Christ in his resurrection. They are spoken of as the General Assembly and Church of Enoch, and all those who gain exaltation will be joined with them. Okay, finally, let's address this uh, question about procreation. You know, we already read that those that are translated, they're righteous, they've received their calling and election, um, or their calling election has been made sure, they were received into heaven. Okay, it it doesn't match whatsoever what we just read in the book of Enoch. The book of Enoch makes it seem as though you always had these people since the beginning of the world, that their assignment is to watch over mankind. Um, and like I said, the translation didn't begin until Enoch. Um, and then them entering into essentially a type of secret combination in order to have children, it just it doesn't match at all. 
but let's get let's move on to the procreation part okay so this is millennial messiah <clears throat> uh, man in all forms of life existed as spirit beings and entities before the foundations of this earth were laid there were spirit men and spirit beasts spirit fowls and spirit fishes spirit plants and spirit trees every creeping thing every herb and shrub every amoeba and tadpole every elephant and dinosaur all things existed as spirits as spirit beings before they were placed naturally upon the earth then uh then natural or or earthly or paradisiacal bodies were provided for men for spirit men in all forms of life our first parents in the original forms of life of every kind and species were placed on earth in a paradisiacal state in that state there was no procreation Okay, now, we're not yet talking about translated beings. Just before the fall, there was no procreation. No death, no mortality, as we know it, and no blood flowing in the veins of man or of the, the animal kingdom. Then came the fall, <clears throat> the effects of which passed upon all mankind and upon every form of life. Sorrow and disease and death entered the world. Man and all created things were able to procreate and reproduce their kind. Blood began to flow in the veins of man and beast. Their bodies underwent a change, and they became mortal. Mortality is the state in which procreation abounds and death prevails. When mortals die, they live again as they live again as spirits, except that they do not return to the presence of God, but abide in a place appointed where they await the day of their resurrection. Of course, that's the spirit world. Okay, now look at this. Some mortals have been translated. In this state, they are not subject to sorrow or to disease or to death. No longer does blood, the life-giving element of our present mortality, flow in their veins. Procreation ceases. Procreation ceases. So, the Watchers could not have been translated beings and had children with human women or women uh, that are not translated because they're not able to procreate. But let's continue. Because what about the millennium? If they then had children, their offspring would be denied a mortal probation, which all worthy spirits must receive in due course. They have power to move and live in both a mortal and an unseen sphere, all translated beings undergo another change in their bodies when they gain full immortality. This change is the equivalent of a resurrection. All mortals after death are also resurrected. In the resurrected state, they are immortal and have in <clears throat> sorry, they are immortal and eternal in nature. And those among them who are privileged to live in the family unit have spirit children. Okay, now the millennium. Look at this. Millennial man will live in a state akin to translation. His body will be changed so that it is no longer subject to disease or death as we know it, although he will be changed in the twinkling of an eye to, fu to full immortality when he is 100 years of age. He will, however, have children, and mortal life of a millennial kind will continue. We will speak more particularly of this shortly. Okay? So before the millennium, if you are translated, you cannot procreate. But because everybody is going to be translated, everyone that moves into the millennium, all that are permitted to stay, all those who abide the day, who aren't burned with the wicked, everyone that continues is in a translated state. And of course, mortality will continue and they will have children. But before the millennium, if you're translated... It was either for a special purpose, like the three Nephites, or it was that special time when Enoch in his city, and then for a while those after, were translated, where they received their calling and election made sure, and um, weren't resurrected yet because they couldn't be, but once Christ came, they were. But being in a translated state, being in a translated state, no more children, no more procreation. So hopefully that clears that up. Um, we'll continue. Uh, I have more to share as part of this playlist. But for now, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. 
Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.